Hello, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Um, so welcome to the day of um, the day of uh, the root chakra in the mental week in the month of Aries and I hope it ends right now because I was thinking that the questions would be very much easier than it's being right now. <laughs> so this is my face right now trying to think how to explain uh, the post for today. <laughs> so I, I, I ask you, please read the post for today because I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, to do this explanation. So, and you don't want for my higher self to come and explain this because he doesn't have any pedagogy. Uh, so, um, uh, so I rather explain this with my personality. And in the meantime, you, you can have fun trying to see how I try to explain this. So the question for today, it was so easy. I thought it was so easy. Um, the question was, how much? So whenever we hear the question, how much, the first thing that comes to our mind is about things, about physical, money, um, yes, goods that you can value. So when we say how much, we think about the amount of things that we can um, that we can achieve, that we can have, can hold, or whatever. So to understand the ancient perception of why we use the word how much, we have to go again to the etymology to see how we are going to understand and use this term. So we begin with the question, how much? Can you see it good, this? So from where comes how much? It comes from quo and mel. So looking into how much, the origin, remember, is quo again. Remember the word quo, it means object. And mel means to grow, to expand, which gave the word mul in Latin the word mul that then was transformed in multu hmm? so multu multus is like molto in, like in latin languages a lot hmm? multu hmm? Uh, and the pronunciation of the t is changed in the latin languages like mult Mult. That's why the sound mult, then this one disappear, and we have much, like in Spanish mucho. Hmm? Okay. So that's the origin of that word. So we can just know that a detail. <laughs> so. Remember also for you to know in English um, the the word cuanto in Spanish, um, like in other languages too, um, um, Latin languages, comes from quo stat. Stat meaning is the participle part. 
of the word stay or to be participle. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so, so of word to be, um, to stay in one place is the space that occupies an object. That is, that's what it means in Spanish, cuanto. The space that occupies an object. Good, okay. This is the easy part. The word cuanto, how much, in Latin, you say quantum, quantum. So quantum would be the concept. So it's the concept of, a, of, a, of an object, of a thing that occupies a space, a place. Hmm? Okay. So here we have the singular aspect of quantum, which is quanto, is a tiny thing, one thing, and quanta is the plural. So, a quanto means, a quanto means the minimum space that something occupies. So, this is the concept, quantum is the concept of the space that something is occupying, and quanto speaks about the tiny space of this object, this object, what space takes this object. So we have the concept how much and quantum, hmm? Latin. So now let's think like in the ancient times, the Indo-European people. Each one of these is a quan, quo, quo, and quo, okay? Quo is an object. So let's say that a pen is a quo. Hmm? This is a quo. So here we have two more quo pens that are equal to this one, okay? So when I put one aside the other one, I have three equal, equal things, which, in the thought of the in the European language, they would say one quo is repeating and occupying the same the space three times. This quo is occupying three times a space. Okay, do you understand now the division of the language? So in this language, people wouldn't say there is three pens. In this language, they would say this pen occupies three spaces. Just about languages. So now when in the past they would ask how many pens are there, they wouldn't say how many pens. They would say, they would say objects, spaces, spaces object. That's the question. Okay. So that's why we have how much, how much is one object in many spaces, okay? So with the evolution of the language, now to each one of these will be called a quanto. This is a quanto, another quanto, another quanto. So I have three quantos here. Hmm? So the conjunction of all of them will be called a quantity. 
a quantity of things. So now, when we are in the past exchanging things, I have this three and this one that is bigger. So it's bigger, so it has more things. So it, it has much more value. So this is a quanto, one thing, a quan, okay? It's one thing. So I have three, but this one here, when it wants to exchange, will ask, quanto, quanto? So this means how much, how much? <laughs> it seems a silly thing, what I'm saying right now, but it's the basis to understand the quantum mechanics, <laughs> basically. <laughs> So, okay, um, so, again, this silly thing. This has a value, and the value is equal to this. So it is equivalent, this value is equivalent to these two, okay? So that's why when I know that this is a quant, a how, and these two are equals to this how, when we are trying to buy and sell things, this word how becomes a question, how much, meaning things, places, things, value, okay? That's the question of, of how much. It's not something that is invented or etherical. It's the quantity of things. Hmm? So we relate this question to how much to money. So we speak about a coin, for example. So we have a coin, yes, and this coin is equal, has the same value, is equivalent to three pens or one bottle of water. So with the same coin, I can buy this or this. It doesn't matter. It's equivalent. So we explained this in the economy video. Um, this bill here has the same value of these three pens like for this bottle of water. So the key here is to understand that the value of things is according to the space that the things occupy in, this, in the earth or in the space. Hmm? Okay. So this means that through thousands of years, we use the concept of quantum of how much related to physical things on Earth. Hmm? So this makes that through thousands of years in the market, the people use the word quantum to describe the quantity of things, of how many things occupy many spaces. That would be. Hmm? So from the market, the concept of quantum for selling starts to be also part of the alchemy and physicians. Why? Physicians meaning doctors. Why? Because the doctors, the physicians, used to go to the market to buy for a quantum of plants, a quantum of this element, a quantum of these minerals, in order to do a poison, uh, um, a potion, hmm? a potion in order to do a medicine for people. So they start to mix the things and to use the term quantum for the amount of elements or the quantity that you use for these elements to create a potion, to create um, a medicine. Hmm? So quantum is what we today call um, a dose of something. Hmm? 
So through centuries of practice of commerce with, with things, with physical things occupying a space, here comes not only the commerce, not only the medicine, but also now the experimentation of things. So they start to ask themselves about how much it takes for one thing to transform into another. So the process that things take in order to change. So we start to use the, the word how much to define also time. Hmm? How much time it takes for one element to make a reaction? How much time it takes for something to become something different? So the measurement of time is also measured by how much. So now we have both space and time divided into minimum quantums, which is unities of space and unities of time. So the word quantum, quanto, starts to define the minimum um, uh, unity that can measure space and can measure time. This is why the science starts to use the term quantum or quanto in order to measure the tiniest part of time or space for the energy to move or for a thing to transform. It's in this way in which we start to measure and to quantify the energy. So when the science starts to discover the electrons, the energy itself, and the things that are inside of the particles of the electrons, like the tiniest thing, like the quarks um, that are inside of the protons and neutrons, when they discover these tiny little parts, they start to measure matter according to that. And that's called the quantum, because it's the tiniest part that can be measured. So as you see, as you see, we started like 30,000 years ago measuring things in the, in the European times with measuring fruits and vegetables and parts of animals, the quantum as a big thing. And then 2,500 years ago, um, um, the empires growing, they started to use the quantum to measure the commerce around the, the countries, and they started to make it into medicine, and so smaller and smaller and smaller, until they, they figure out that this is a quantum, but what is made of? So how many, how many of these are here inside? So they started to look more and more deep and deep in, until they found out the smallest particle that was able to be measured. So that's why they call that the quantum world, the quantum reality. It's the tiniest thing that we can measure from the biggest one to the small one. Hmm? So this was started to use in order to measure the quantity of electrons that you need in order to make an electrical current to understand how it works. They started to evolve in the concepts, trying to understand um, to understand the quantity of these tiny particles and they reach to understand also how to measure the particles of light. So the quantity, the quantum of light. 
around 1800s, what the people that started to discover these tiny little particles. So in order to understand the tiniest particles, okay, the tiniest particles of, of all, uh, they could understand how to quantify the energy of things. And that was the beginning of the thermodynamics. Okay, so how to understand how the universe works, the laws of the thermodynamics. So quantum was used there to measure these amounts of energy. So what these discoveries made was like the universe gives and receives energy in tiny little particles and packages of information and energy. So this energy is shared, give and received by this tiny package of energy that are quantif quantificable. So they quantify, so, so, so you can quantify them. So that's why they call them quantums. This is where the quantic theories starts to be born. Mm -hmm. So now when we, when the, the humans started to have much more tools to see inside of these tiny particles and go beyond these subatomical particles, they figure out that the loss of thermodynamics doesn't work. That the loss of thermodynamics goes from the particles above and the macrocosmos, but they don't work in the microcosmos under the subatomical structure. The funny thing that happened when you go inside of this reality is that the tiniest particle of energy that you that we thought was the quantum, the tiniest measurable thing in the universe, the quantum, hmm, suddenly can behave like this, like two particles or behave like waves. So it doesn't matter. It can do whatever. So they can behave like physical particles or vibrational waves. So another weird thing that happened down there or inside is that every particle can divide itself in thousands of particles or waves at the same time. So creating thousands of other options, possibilities, parallel realities all the time, but will only exist the one that we perceive, the one that we put our attention on, that is the one that will manifest, but the others, we don't know what happened with them. So that's like, bah. so that's why we call it quantic physics, physics, quantic physics, because after you reach the last quantum of energy or the last quantum particle, Everything is impossible to understand. So that's why, that's why they call it the quantum physics, the quantum mechanics. So now to understand something basic, the difference between the bigger physics and the smaller physics. In the bigger physics, zero is equal a wave. For example, I'm giving an example. Zero is equal a wave, and one is equal a particle. Hmm? So it will always be a wave and a particle. But in the quantum physics that I just said before, the wave can behave as a particle and the particle can behave as a wave. So it really doesn't matter because 
in the physic in the quantic is all the same. So now in the in the binary code of zero one, we can interpret it that zero is one data is an information and one is another data. So when you put these connections of one zero 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 one one zero zero one one and infinite codes of one and zero one and zero, they will always represent information encoded. Okay, so zero one zero one. This will be spaces and um, and and uh, and places occupied places by data by the information. So there are codes when you have a problem to solve. The codes has all the information, and so they try to match this information with the one that they have to solve the problem. So it's basically that. So um, just to understand, this is algebra. I, I don't understand anything about this mathematics and, and algebra and all that. But uh, just to have the basics in mind, um, 0, 1 are just two codes of information. So depending on how they organize, there will be something shown. So something will be shown. So for example, what you see now in the screen, the words, the people writing, and everything that when you write and appears on the screen, all that are codes, colors, letters, everything that you are seeing myself are all encoded in 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. It's constantly that. It's, it's, it's just a constant of codes between 0 and 1 all the time, OK? So, um, so that would be. So now the, the, the really good thing about the quantics in this is that the zero and the one doesn't really mean zero and one. It means many things. So it can be whatever all the time. So many options are open with the quantum because zero is not zero. Zero can be zero, one, and everything. So when you put the quantum mechanics into the normal mechanics, it solves much faster the problems and look for much more answers than before. It multiplies by thousands the possibilities of having information. Because in only one thing, when the physics see only one thing, the mechanic, the quantics see many different things in many directions. Hmm? So that's why the quantum computers, the quantum mechanics for the for today are being really useful to the AI for the new technology uh, for all the transformations that we are having constantly all the time. Mm -hmm. So now we have here two different things. the quantum of the macrocosmic physics and the quantum of the microcosmic physics. The quantum of the macrocosmic physics is the one that measure the quantity of things. So the quantum, the quantum, quantum of the macrocosmos is the one that refers to to the measurement of things, the quantity of the things through space and through time. Hmm? The quantum of the microcosmic physics is the one that, that talks about the possibilities of things. Probabilities of things. So we can say also that this quantifying things can be called also in this way. Yo soy, I am. Oops. 
this connection between the micro and the macro has been always seen by the spirituality throughout thousands of years. But science is trying to understand this now. And today, spirituality, we used to say a quantum leap. What is a quantum leap? What is a quantify leap? Now, if we already got the idea that the how much, the quanto, quantum, is the measurement of something through time and space, according to the space that it occupies in this reality. And through the microcosmos, the measurement of the quantum is according to the decision of being a particle or a wave. So what is the leap? Remember this, the word how much, the quantum in the macrocosmic, in the macrocosmic physics related to the me, the self, is the one that measures the space, the space, <laughs> space and time that something occupies in the reality. That's the summary of this. And remember this difference. In the microcosmic physics, the quantum, the how much, is describing how something can be transformed from a particle to a wave being free and eternal, deciding whatever, freely, without any law. Those are the two visions of the quantum, the, of the quantum world. So what is the quantum leap? So the quantum leap would be when the object, the being, the subject, becomes aware that even if it is living through a time and through a space, it has also the inner will to transform itself and transcend itself freely from one shape to another through the eternity. In a spiritual way, a quantum leap is to become aware that we are God. And from the point of view of science, is to learn how to travel through time and teletransportation. and many other things, but I'm heady. So, um, of course, that there are many other things to say, but we have time. I don't have any plan to die any day around. So we have time to speak about these things in another moment too. So, um, so sorry because of all these things and information, but uh, it's just that I don't usually know these things and, and use these things, this information. So I'm kind of headache because there are many topics that I don't really know. Um, so, so of course that um, uh, I, I'm the one that ex that tries to explain the line between etymology, the past, the economy, the particles, and and interdimensional realities. But 
I don't know specifically about this topic. So if you want to know much more deep about these things, please go to the things that to the people that knows about this specifically. My capacity to explain this arrives until here. <laughs> um, the vibration for today is go. The statement for today is I am the created vision. Uh, just one last thing that I didn't explain and I want to say, yes. So the thing that I wanted to explain, to, to say uh, as the last thing, um, is that um, for sure you have heard this concept that we are the creators of our own reality. <clears throat> um, and this is a connection between the spiritual world and the science of the quantum mechanics. Because <clears throat> uh, in, the, um, in the physics, they can explain now that one particle can behave as many as, as a wave or whatever. <clears throat> so it can divide in many different options. So imagine that the particle is an object. Remember, object. And the physics that says is that the reality depends on the one that is observing that reality. Meaning that there are many possibilities of the creation in this particle, but it will be only manifested the one that is observed. So all the others that are not observed, they are not manifested, even though they exist. But the one that is manifested is the one that we observe. So here we have the particle being the object and the observer being the subject. Remember, we spoke about that these days. Um, so in the spirituality, we say we are the creators, the creators of our own, of our own reality. And for sure, you have heard this sentence, which connects with this concept of the particle and the subject observing the particle. So what I wanted to say is that when we hear this thing that we are the creators of our, of our own reality, it's not the person that decides that reality by looking at it. It's the I am. I am. It's the whole being that determines that. It's the mind, the essence. So if we are not aligned with the I am, we cannot change the reality. Because it's not the person, the eyes of the person, the observer, is the subject. And the subject is the whole being, the entire being. This is why the quantum leap that the people are talking about is not from the ego, from the personality that decides to change the reality. Is from the I am. It's a leap of consciousness, of realizing that we are a whole. The observer is the I am, and we are one of those potentialities of the particle that is manifested. Remember, this is only one particle that has thousands of billions of options, and the observer, the I am, is the one that allows to manifest one of these options. So we here, we are one of those options. One of those manifestations. This is why when we are connected to the I am, we are able to transform the reality because the personality is one of those manifested options of the particle. So um, I, I, I think that I said what I wanted to say. Um, if you didn't get it, just listen it once and again. And I will try to explain it better in some other way, some other moment. OK? Um, yeah. OK. Vibration, go. The statement for today is, I am the um created vision the code for today is orion 
the guardian of the galaxy's portal is the scary giant, the warrior that hunts in the forest of creation. From its stars come the beings that have fecundated the worlds, equally by love and by force. What makes us live in a dual conflict? This constellation is the axis between the four stellar directions. And for that, the belt of the giant is the guide of all civilizations to find balance between worlds and dimensions. Close our eyes and concentrate in the breathing. I become aware of the space I find myself in and the body I find myself in. Breathe. I bring my attention above my head, watching the light, which is my consciousness, in the shape of a divine spark and breathing, I ignite it. I descend this divine spark to my crown chakra. With deep breath, I activate and expand this divine spark as a crown upon my head. And in its light, I activate the question, in how many things I believe. Ignite. I descend this divine spark to the center of my head, to my third eye. Taking deep breath, I expand this divine spark throughout my eyes and all my brain. And in its light, I activate the question, in how many things I think Ignite. I descend this divine spark to my throat.
with deep breaths, I expand this divine spark throughout my throat and my voice. And in its light, I activate the question, how much do I express myself really? Ignite. I descend this divine spark to my heart. With deep breath, I expand this divine spark throughout my heart towards every direction. And in its light, I activate the question, how many things do I feel? Ignite. I descend this divine spark to my solar plexus. Taking deep breaths, I expand this divine spark throughout all my being. And in its light, I activate the question, how many relationships I have? Ignite. I descend this divine spark to my sacrum. Taking deep breath, I expand this divine spark throughout all my creative center. And in its light, I activate the question, how many things I have created? Ignite. I descend this divine spark to the root chakra.
taking deep breath, I expand this divine spark through my genitals. And in its light, I activate the question, how many things I have and ignite I descend this divine spark to my knees Taking deep breath, I expand this divine spark through my legs and knees. And in its light, I activate the question, how many paths I have taken? night I descend this divine spark to my feet Taking deep breaths, I expand this divine spark through my feet and ankles. And in its light, I activate the question, how many missions I have chosen? Ignite. Take a deep breath and expand these divine sparks throughout the entire being. Activating the question How much? Do I worth? I am the vision of the created. I am the vision of the created. I am the vision of the created. I 
I am. I am. I am. I start to bring this consciousness all through my body, stretching, yawning, and each one at its own time come back here and now. Thank you everybody for being here as always and see you tomorrow at the same time.